Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new here. My name is Amanda and this is my adventures in Bookland. Happy 2020 guys. Um, it's been a while since I made a video. Um, so many hectic things going on but I'm hoping my goal for 2020 is to be more consistent with posting and to read more. I did a really good job last year. Um, I read so many books. I read so many books. So we're going to, this video is going to be a TBR video for January of 2020. So I've got quite the stack. So first off, I'm going to be participating in two readathons. That's wrong. That's, that's not right. First off, I'm going to be participating in two buddy reads in my book club and the first one, it, both of them are going to be January and February. We're going to read the books between January and February. So the first one that I joined in on is A Game of Thrones by George R.R. R. Martin. And I have been putting off reading this book for so long. I've been wanting to read it since I first started watching The Game of Thrones um, series on HBO and it just it looked so intimidating and I thought there's no way that I'm gonna get this read but so I finally decided to get into this book and this series I've already started it I am 98 pages in and I'm loving it loving it there's some problems with it but I'll talk about that in my wrap up when I finish it. So if you don't know what Game of Thrones is, Game of Thrones is basically these different powerful families fighting for the throne. Game of Thrones. It's political, it's action packed, there's a lot of death. So far I'm only on 98 pages and there's already been a lot of death. So um, there's dragons, it's an epic high fantasy, which I love, by the way. So yeah, that's what this is about. I'm hoping that I love it. And the next buddy read I'm joining in on is actually a reread for me, the first book anyways. And that is the All Souls trilogy, starting with A Discovery of Witches. I read this last December and I absolutely loved it. So I'm rereading it so that I can continue on with the series because I only managed to get through this one and I didn't pick up any of the other books. So I'm gonna read this one with my book club and go through and read the rest of the series. Discovery of Witches follows our main character, Diana Bishop, and she is a witch, but she doesn't really wanna be a witch, so she tries to not use her powers. She is a historian. She calls up a bewitched manuscript and everything just breaks loose from there. There's vampires, demons, witches, you name it, it's in here. She has to team up with an unlikely friend. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. There's romance in here and it's beautiful and I love it. If you like witches and vampires and such, read this. This is not supposed to be like a wrap up type video, but I've already read that one, so. So those are the two that I'm doing a buddy read for. Now getting into the rest of the books that I'm gonna be reading for the month of January, starting with the Lost by Natasha Preston. I have heard really good things about this book. We follow a teenager named Piper and in her hometown, teenagers keep disappearing and everyone just assumes that they're runaways. But when another person vanishes, Piper and her best friend Hazel suspect that something else is going on and that, that they're not just running away. So Piper and Hazel decide to investigate the runaways their search for answers leads them to lead them to the source of the missing people and to their captors the two suddenly find themselves locked away in a secluded building in the middle of a privately owned forest but the building isn't only meant to keep them imprisoned every room is a test to see if they can make it out alive this kind of reminds me of a teenage version of saw and i love those movies so I'm hoping that I'll really enjoy this one. The next one is also a reread for me, and that is Marked by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. And I read this book uh, in high school, so like 10 years ago, 13 years ago. I know it's been a really long time. But I loved this book, and I didn't make it through the entire series. I do own 
all of the series except for one because I was obsessed with it but I think I only made it to like through like four of the book and I really want to finish it so I am going back through and rereading it is the first book in the House of Night series in this world everybody knows about vampires but you don't get turned into a vampire by a bite it's just a change that happens you're tracked by a tracker and they mark you we follow our main character Zoe Redbird who has been marked by a tracker and she is now a fledgling vampire and all fledgling vampires have to go and stay at the house of night school to be around fully changed adult vampires because your body can reject the change and then you like die die she has been chosen as special by the vampire goddess Nyx and she's not the only vampire fledgling at the house of night with special powers she discovers that the dark daughters which is an elite group in the school their leader is misusing her gifts so Zoe and her group of friends take on the leader of the Dark Daughters it is really good if you like vampire teenage vampire angsty this is a good series the next book I'm really excited about I read spoilers I read the first one it's not technically the first one it's like the novellas anyways I have been wanting to read this series for like ever and that is a throne of glass by Sarah J Mass and I read The Assassin's Blade last month and I absolutely loved it. So I cannot wait to find out what happens in this book. So our main character, Selena Sardothian, is an assassin, but she has been imprisoned in this imprisonment camp in like the mines or something. And she has come to the palace to gain her freedom. She must defeat 23 killers, thieves, and warriors in a competition to find the greatest assassin in the land. She will become the king's champion and be released from prison. It sounds really good. The next book is one that my my stepson picked out for me to read and that is The Light at the Bottom of the World by London Shaw. I think that's how you say their name. I'm sorry if it's not. In the last days of the 21st century, sea creatures swim through the ruins of London. Trapped in the abyss, humankind wavers between fear and hope. Fear of what lurks in the depths around them and hope that they might one day find a way back to the surface. When 16-year-old submersible racer Layla McQueen is chosen to participate in the city's prestigious annual marathon, she sees an opportunity to save her father, who has been arrested on false charges. The Prime Minister promises the champion whatever their hearts desire. So this definitely sounds amazing and I can't wait to read it and I will let you know if I like it. The next book on my list is Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. This is the second book in the Grishaverse and I read the first one, I wanna say October, maybe November. Really enjoyed it. I don't really wanna tell you too much about what this is about because it might spoil some of the first book. This is coming out on, I think, Netflix and I'm so ready for it. That's why I want to get through the series so that I will know what's going on. <laughs> okay, so the next book on my TBR is Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. And look how beautiful this book is. I got this in an owl crate. I don't remember what month it was. I think October. And it's got the blue sprayed edges. I don't know what this is about. So I'm going to read the synopsis to you. It's like wintry and it's January. So be careful of the dark, dark wood, especially the woods surrounding the town of Furhaven. Some say these woods are magical, cursed even. Rumored to be a witch, only Nora Walker knows the truth. She and the Walker women before her have always shared a special connection with the woods and it's this special connection that leads Nora to Oliver Huntsman the same boy who disappeared from the camp for wayward boys weeks ago and in the middle of the worst snowstorm in years he should be dead but here he is alive and left in the woods with no memory of the time he'd been missing but Nora can feel an uneasy shift in the woods at Oliver's presence and it's not too long after that Nora realizes she has no choice but to unearth the truth behind how the boy she has come to care so deeply about survived his time in the forest and what led him there in the first place what Nora doesn't know though is that Oliver has secrets of his own secret he'll do anything to keep buried because as it turns out he wasn't the only one who went missing that fateful night all those weeks ago Ooh, sounds so mysterious and dark and good uh, and the last physical book on my TBR is East 
by Edith Pateau. I don't think that's how you say her last name, but I have been wanting to read this for a while and it looks all wintry and pretty. So I thought January would be a perfect time to read it. Rose has always longed for adventure. So when an enormous white bear appears one evening and makes her a mysterious offer, she accepts. In exchange for health and prosperity for her ailing family, she agrees to live with the white bear in a distant castle. But Rose soon realizes that all isn't as it seems. As she tries to settle into her new life, she makes a devastating mistake. Now she must make a choice, return to her safe and loving family, or go on a dangerous quest to fix what she has broken, and perhaps lose her heart along the way. Ugh. So that is my TBR for January. That is my TBR for January, and she thick. She a thick girl. January, I have high hopes for, I guess, and we probably not gonna read all these books, but we gonna try. Don't forget to like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any posts from me. Uh, let me know what you're reading in January or if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye! My heart rages around like an ocean in my head Because there are so many things that I love